founder and leader of the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Chief Ralph Wazurike, has accused Namdekan of hijacking Radio Biafra from him and later used it to blackmail him. Namdekano hijacked Radio Biafra from me, blackmailed me and used it to scam Ndibo, was Ricky claims. According to him, I formed Masob. As a matter of fact, I am the originator of the new Biafran struggle. I originated it in 1999 and no other group spoke of Biafra before 1999. I also said it that we would allow the formation of other groups. I studied political science and law, and I have read many issues on struggles and revolutions, and concluded that there was no way one body, a group, could achieve Biafra without other factions. I went to London and floated Radio Biafra there. I needed somebody to operate it and I appointed Namdekano as the director. But he felt that the best thing he could do was to blackmail me with the radio. It is not new because that is the nature of an Igbo man. It is for the Igbo man to backbite, to double cross his brother. And that is why we are behind the Nigerian scheme. As long as the Igbo man continues with that mentality, the Igbo race is doomed. Look at what is happening in the political parties. If an Igbo man sponsors another person to be governor, that governor becomes his enemy the next day. Juxtapose it with what is happening in Yoruba land. If Bola Tinubu had been an Igbo man, he would have gone on exile. Look at how many governors he appointed in he anointed in Yoruba land. They all pay him to they all pay him to respect or they all pay him respect up till today. If it were to be in Igbo land they would send him out of town immediately. He will not live in Igbo land because they will chase him out. Look at what the Igbo who was anointed, look at all the Igbo who were anointed governors. How many of them respect those who anointed them? That is the mentality of the Igbo man, retrogressive mentality. The mentality that leads to nowhere but doom. So what Namdekano did was of no difference because it is the typical nature of the Igbo man. That is what makes the Igbo man to be backward and they will continue to remain backward until they change their ways of life. To answer your question finally, I have no quarrels with IPOP or any other group in the struggle. What I am against is falsehood, blackmail, and lies, which IPOP brought into the struggle. The more the merrier. I want more factions to emerge. If Uwazurike were the only person speaking of Biafra, the temple would not have been like we have noticed it today. The tempo should be higher if other groups emerge. But to use lies and blackmail against the founder is abominable. All right, guys, you've heard what uh, Wazirike has come out to say that uh, Namdekano hijacked Radio Biafra from him and uh, used it to blackmail him. He said he formed uh, Radio Biafra in London in 1999 and he needed somebody to run it and uh, that which led to him appointing Namdekanu to run the Radio Biafra. But somehow it was uh, Namdekanu who, you know, hijacked the Radio Biafra from him and, you know, 
is using it against him. According to him, he said, now the Kano is using it to blackmail him. Well, I don't know if that is true or not. I don't know if that is true or not. I don't know if that is the case at the moment. But guys, you that are, you know, conversant with the struggle of Biafra and how things has actually unfolded, what are your thoughts on this particular issue? Is it true that uh, Nam Kano, you know, um, took over Radio Biafra from Uwazurike and um, used it to blackmail him? Is that the actual story of what happened? We'd like to know so uh, history would not be distorted. It is important for us to know this and it is important for it to be stated. So guys, what are your thoughts on this particular new story? Is it true that uh, Wazurike was the founder of Radio Biafra? Was he the one that founded it? And was he the one that handed it over to Nambekano to run it according to the claims that has been uh, released? Well, we like to know all these issues so that history, you know, will uh, take its course. Also, based on the fact that other factions have emerged, you know, like the IPOB, Masob, and other, do you believe or do you agree with Wazurike that other factions need to come up so that the temple for the call for the actualization of Biafra would be higher than other world leaders can listen do you agree with him on that well if you agree with him on that you know let's know what your thoughts are on this particular issue well let's take a few reactions and see or hear what people are saying concerning Uwazurike Daniel Alex says Uwazurike should be hiding his face in shame He's a bunch of fraudulent fellow who shamelessly sold out his followers in betrayal for penalties from the federal government. He murdered thousands of innocent people for his selfish interest. He's a land grabber to the extent of grabbing a land belonging to a religious institution at Area G World Bank Owere. The numerous atrocities committed by these miscreants must never go on published as nemesis must surely catch up with him. Ojiaka says, See, don't let God be angry with you. Just close your mouth and ask God for forgiveness on how you betrayed Biafrans. Oyis Oyis says, Praise him as your son if you are pure Igbo man, but you know exactly what you mean because there's no time to check time. Uncle Zubi says, this is the major problem with us, the Igbos. I am an Igbo man. The problem is nothing but PhD pull him down. Wazurike, you should know that most freedom fighters don't live a comfortable life. During your own time, even now, you are going around places in a very expensive cars, jeeps, and as I heard, with the British most expensive car. Your methods changed and Namdekano took over from you because you changed from your original plans. So please, you, you people should stop this useless act of pull him down. It is not good and other people and tribes are watching. Onyeze, Gazerike, you died and another lively one took over. Do you want Biafra to die together with you? God forbid. Alright guys, it seems that so many people are not in support of Wazurike's statement and uh, they are standing or taking a stand with Nam De Kano, believing that Nam De Kano did a, has done a better job than Wazurike. Why some are accusing Wazurike of uh, you know, actually betraying uh, his members, his followers and all what have you and some other accusations that has trailed Wazurike's uh, situation well guys what do you think on this particular news story what do you think on this matter is it really true that was Rike betrayed his brothers or betrayed his followers do you think that uh, is it true that was Rike, you know uh, has been moving around in expensive vehicles and uh, has it deviated from the original plans did he, or did he deviate from the original plans we need to know all these issues and much more or uh, what is happening because this exchange of words between uh, or these accusations of 
betrayal, blackmail, and all what have you by Wazriki, uh, is he helping matters or is he, why is he coming at this particular point in time? We, why is it that it is at this point in time that Wazriki is mentioning these issues or coming out to say that Nambi Kano, you know, blackmailed him, took over Radio Biafra from him and blackmailed him? So these are issues that needs to be looked into and are needs needs to be addressed as um, the issue of Biafra is beginning to uh, take um, shape in in, a, in and around the world. Well, guys, these are my thoughts and opinions on this particular news story. Kindly drop out the comment section. Let us know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Please do hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post a new story. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you on the other news. Have a wonderful time. Thank you.